four out of five stuff that I try is kind of a disappointment on my over 50 year old skin. <laughs> Soon to be 57 year old skin. Hey everyone, it's Maggie D here. I'm back with another makeup video for mature skin um, over 50 years old. I am just playing around today, getting ready for the day. I am testing my um, Can Make Mermaid Gel. I got this um, off of eBay. You can also get it off of Yes Style. It's a sunscreen and um, I bet this is probably like the fourth day I've worn it, but today I've got it just on this half of my face just for the video. After this I'll probably um, wash my face and start over for the day because I'm just not I'm not gonna go all day with just half sunscreen. But it's um, really nice and I, I like it. Can make Tokyo Mermaid Skin Gel. It's got a SPS SPF of 50 and it has a PA with four pluses. And if you're not familiar with that, that's a system that they use. Um, they might use it in Europe too, but I know they use it in, in Japan and Korea. So the SPF, of course, 50, that means the UVB, which is the um, ray that gives you a sunburn. And then the PA rating is for the UVA, which is what ages us. And the sunscreens that we have in the United States don't have um, any information about the UVA protection, like how much you're getting and how long it lasts and all that stuff. It's all about SPF. So, anyway, um, I like it. it. I think it's supposed to have a little, since it's called Mermaid, it's supposed to have just a little bit of glistening to it. I don't really see that very much. I don't really see luminosity. Um, I see kind of a oiliness. And it does have, I can feel it. I can tell I have it on. It's just life, you know. I can't really get um, the perfect combination of foundation and sunscreen going yet. So I've been using the last couple days, and I'm not happy with it. <laughs> this sample, um, Tint Idol Ultra Wear by Lancome. And I have the color... One forty ivory. Um, the color's okay, but um, yesterday I used it, and I used it over my mermaid gel moisturizer and mermaid gel, and it got in my fine lines and wrinkles right here on my crow's feet before I could even finish my makeup. So I'm gonna try it again one more time since it's a sample. I like to give it a good enough shot. I'm gonna try it here where with it's just um. I don't even have moisturizer on. This is a hardcore test. I have splashed water on my face this morning. Um, so whatever's on here is from my skincare last night. So it's not dry and I, I just want to see how it does just really on bare skin. If it goes in my lines and wrinkles on that, I'll know it's a no-go for sure. So I'm just going to use a beauty blender. I don't use a whole lot of um, foundation. I, I would like to have a better looking <laughs> coverage, but I can't seem to get it that way and have it not look gunky on my textured skin. So anyway, it is a process of learning. Foundation is the most frustrating thing for me, and it's... Um, The most challenging. I just realized I haven't had my microphone on, so it's on now. We'll see if the audio is a little bit better. So, um, got a tip from someone that, I think it may have been a Bobby Brown video, where um, just try to put your foundation in the middle and then just move it out. So, um, 
I feel like right now with that amount, I don't even feel like I have anything on. I can't, I can't see it. So um, for purposes of this video, I'm going to come again to this. I believe this might be a um, sheer to medium coverage maybe, or my sponge is soaking it all up. Not sure. So we'll see. If you like this foundation and you've got some tips on it, let me know. I don't hear that about it being talked about all that much in my um, beauty space, the over 50 crowd. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it does. Now the new um, Tint Adol concealer, of course, just came out. And everybody's ranting and raving about that. And um, we'll see. I'll, I'll probably try it next month. I don't have it. I haven't bought it. I don't feel compelled. My channel's young and new. I don't feel compelled to keep running to the store to buy stuff, and I promise that I wouldn't buy anything else this month in August. And so, anyway, I'm making a little list. I'm not sure if concealer is going to be on there or not. I'm still working on my sunscreen, perfect sunscreen foundation combo. Okay, now I can definitely tell that I have foundation on. I'm just going to spend a few more minutes. I'm going to quit talking and I'm going to spend a minute blending a little bit more. Okay, so I'm done blending, I think. And now I'm going to take my magnifying mirror, which is the most ghastly thing ever and I'm just going to look at it <laughs> for a minute. I would say I don't know if I would call it skin like. I've got a little flaky there. It always gets in uh, the deep lines and wrinkles on my forehead. I have to sort of dig that out right away. So far, okay on that. It's okay. I feel like it looks a little heavy and mask-like for me. But I'm not really used to wearing a lot of foundation. Now, when I back off and I'm um, just looking in the regular mirror without my readers on, it looks okay. It does look like makeup, though. And I do feel like this; these areas right here look older than they do without makeup. So it feels like all of this is always a challenge and it's accentuating the texture and the wrinkles right there. So anyway, to do a full face um, is a, kind of a lot for me. Might look okay on this camera, but in real life, doesn't always look great. Okay, so we're moving on. We're going to give it a little while and see if it settles into my crow's feet again. Um, next thing I'm going to do, probably should have done this before. Well, usually I cover my birthmark, but I guess I'm going to skip that at this moment. I'm going to put a little bit of this Hollywood Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury. I like it. I use this almost every day. I use this on top of tinted moisturizer or foundation. And sometimes I use it just on top of my sunscreen. It's in the summer, it's hot. Sometimes I'm not doing anything but sunscreen. <laughs> I just try to keep it, I try to go ahead and squint a little and it doesn't seem to crawl up in my crow's feet 
but I just, I don't like ask for trouble by putting it in there on purpose. So I like that pretty good. And then um, I like to do my eyebrows. I can't really figure out what I want to do with my eyes until I do my eyebrows. Um, I'm using this Julep pencil that I've had for a while, the Works Brow Pencil Intended Fiber Gel. It's got this um, pencil in taupe. I like it pretty good, but you have to press pretty hard. And then I have this part that's in here with the fiber gel. I don't like this at all. I don't use it. It's too dry and it's too fibery for me. It does, ooh, ooh. maybe not too fibery. It has a spoolie. It just, it's not sticking. It's not covering. The main, one of the main things I need is to cover the gray, uh, the gray hairs that are in my eyebrows. I like to do that. So anyway, I've been going a little bit First of all, I'm staying in the top of my eyebrow. I think that's really important to give yourself a little lift. And then I'm also going, making myself a little arch, sort of like a sliver of a half moon, kind of on the top center of each one to give myself a little lift. And I'm pretty happy with that, although I'm going to be exploring some new eyebrow pencils. But, you know. First, I kind of just cover in the skin under the hair. And I don't worry, but I do still try to stay kind of in the top, at least the top third of my eyebrow. So, like, I know the whole thing's not really covered, but that's just giving me a, a little more natural look when it's not, it doesn't look so drawn on because the bottom part of my hairs don't have this on the skin underneath the hairs. Okay, and then I go and make my little moon. And I'm going on up to where there isn't any hair. When I say moon, I mean like a sliver. You know, sometimes the sometimes in the month of moon, or like a little sliver of your fingernail, just a little bitty sliver to make my arch a little higher. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty subtle, but I can see it. All right, and then I go in with, I mean, it kind of is like, <laughs> takes a few minutes to get used to. When I first look at it, I'm like, whoa, did I go too high? And then they're not always even, but I don't get too caught up in that because my face isn't even. And uh, most of our faces are not perfectly symmetrical. If you ever take a um, like a Photoshop uh, software and you f take half your face and you flip it so that it's really the same half, you look weird. <laughs> Makes a big difference. So um, some like models for makeup are known to have like almost perfectly symmetrical face, um, and that's why they get the job, I guess. But most of us are not, and most of us kind of don't. You look like an android or a robot if you're like perfectly symmetrical, in, in my humble opinion. So anyway, um, finishing my brow, I'm using this. You've seen this before. Um, Anastasia Brow Gel. I know that's not the official name of it, though. It's um, Anastasia Beverly Hills. Taupe. I'm going to have to put it on the screen. I don't remember. It's just, it's not called brow gel. I see the word gel on there. It's called something else. It's okay. Um, I've used the heck out of it. Look how scratched up. I don't know if you can see how scratched up <laughs> it is. Um, I like it. It seemed to be dried out. For a while even when I first got it and then I dug around in there a whole lot and now it's almost too wet again go figure and it doesn't have the tiniest of brushes um, some of them have a smaller brush like this wet and wild brow 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 
<laughs> brow something gel. I don't know. There you go. That has a, this one is a bigger, this more expensive one has a bigger brush. And this is that little bitty brush. And I like this little bitty brush. But guess what? I've been unable to find this in taupe. And the brown and the warm brown and the ash brown, none of that works really. I've really got to have the right color. So anyway, I go in, I get my magnifying mirror, my big, big old thing here. And I usually don't hold it. I just set it down and I get up here and I try to get these gray hairs covered. And in the meantime, I get a lot on my skin. So it, my eyebrows start looking dirty. So I take this cotton swab, this makeup wipe. It's that hard cotton, unlike a, just the kind you have for your ears. And I clean it up right away. Oh, guess what? This has settled already. <laughs> it, um, it's a mess on my... I'm going to just see if you can... I will try my best to make this big. This Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Foundation. This is on bare skin. This is over my sunscreen. So um, the good news is my mermaid gel is not the cause of this because I was like, I hope it my mermaid gel sunscreen is not the reason. I can't find foundation. I mean, it might be, but this is getting in my fine lines and wrinkles on my bare skin just as much as on my sunscreen skin. So I'm kind of relieved of that. All right, I'm going to get up here and do my other eyebrow real, really quick. And I'm not, I'm pretty liberal with this for me. I would say for the, this is the one thing I go ahead and use a heavy hand on this brow gel. And it looks like, you know, a big creepy spider in the mirror. I was trying to get them to go up because that's the style. But I haven't been able to do that yet with any of the products I have, including um, NYX The Brow Glue, which is clear. I was trying. I might try again. Let's see trying to get them to kind of go up a little more, but they just flop right back down. I need something like this most super duper. Hold, like Aquanet or something. Alrighty, so we'll, st we'll see. I mean, they're a little bit, they're kind of up now but we'll see they'll probably fall down by the time i finish this video all right so now for the fun part i like blush and i like eyeshadow um i wear mascara and a little bit of eyeliner and lips i like color that's that that's the thing i like adding color like just boom you look so much better i can hardly <laughs> stand to look at myself with this foundation Maybe I put it on, maybe. See, I'm gonna try to give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's just see if I can take some off before we go too much further and wipe it out of my wrinkles. I mean, when I talk and laugh, I get, you know, like I have that. <laughs> I crinkle my nose. That's like a really obvious, I mean, boom. When it settles into the creases on my nose, it's a no-go for me. I mean, you know, I can stand a little bit on my crow's feet. It's pretty common to see <laughs> ladies of our age, your friends and family, whatever, have that makeup settling into their crow's feet, but, you know... I don't want it into those really big places. Let's see if I got some of it out. 
All right, I got it out again. I don't know. I don't know about that. Okay, so back to the more exciting things, which is my colors. What will I use? Oh, I'm gonna use my new e.l.f. because of what I'm wearing. I can't help it. If I have on a shirt that's a solid color, that's sort of um, a color that is found in your skin, like I won't do it with a green or a blue for eyeshadow. It's a little crazy for me, but um, generally speaking. Um, anyway, I bought this um, on my camping trip in Trinidad, Colorado. It's everywhere. I mean, it doesn't cost much. This little e.l.f. palette. And my color is Bite Size Shadow Rose Water. And I wasn't really expecting much. I was like, eh, this is not going to be. I had that Milani um, palette, and it, I didn't like it. The fallout was like, oh, I kind of like this. This is pretty good. I have some new brushes I'd like to talk about real quick. Um... If I can say the word, I struggle, I struggle. Haiku do. Haiku hodo. Haiku hodo. Japanese. Oh, they're nice. They're really nice. <laughs> anyway, I also got this from e.l.f., this brush cleaning thing. And I've been using it. I think you're supposed to use it, like, at the sink. I get that. But it also works pretty good for just, like, flipping off the powder the color so you can keep going anyway so I'm going to start with this color right here um, should I give you the name of it Lord help, me. Lord help me does it have names it's gotten to the point where I need readers and magnifier Mini Eye Cream Formula is creamy, blendable, and ultra pigmented. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but, um, so yeah, the colors don't really have names, but I'm going to start with this matte. There's only one in here that's matte, and I'm going to flop that on my aging eyelids. Oh! I forgot something that I really like, and I'm not willing to go without it now. The Urban Decay Eyeshadow Potion Primer Original. Love it. Compared to Anastasia Eye Primer Base Primer. This one is like flesh color and some other over 50 YouTubers with different skin. Um, I think it was um, Miss Melissa she loves this. And so, but it just doesn't work for me. It makes the whole thing look worse and white and cakey. So, anyway, this one works better for me. So, I kind of love the fact that things don't work the same on everyone because, I'm like, we are so unique and individual. You know, we need to celebrate that. I mean, I know I watch, I watch a lot of videos, too, to get product recommendations but, um, I mean, a lot of stuff that everybody else likes, it doesn't work. It doesn't work on me. And then stuff that um, I like, I don't know. I don't hear about it. But then there is the lowest common denominator. A lot of these things, other everyone likes it, and I, I do too. So, you just never know. You never know. Oh, my. Okay, well, that foundation made a real mess on my eyelids. I'm just against it. <laughs> I was against the foundation. I like to just pat this primer on if I can and try to remember not to rub it on. Um, I was against this foundation. I wore it to church the other day and uh, I got out. I was like, ooh, not good, not good. And that I don't even know if that's a color. It's a good enough color match. For testing it, I'll put it that way. Um, if I loved the formula, I would go and get a real color match. Okay, so my eyelids are a hot mess with the foundation under it. 
but I'm going to press on. You know, so I see most people don't put foundation on their eyelids, but a lot of the makeup artists do. And like Wayne Goss is like, if you don't put, you have a weird color right there, and then you put the shadow on, it just doesn't work right. And I kind of agree, because you're sort of changing the color of your skin. So anyway, I've got this matte, and I'm going pretty much all over the lid. I will say it's not, well, it's a subtle color, so therefore it's hard to say highly pigmented. I don't know. I don't think so, but I would say medium pigmented. It goes on, honestly, this cheap thing goes on a lot better than this naturally pretty palette I've been trying and trying to work out of. You can work and work and work on this. Well, let's just do the other eye. And you can't ever get it any color. Go in with this color right here. I mean, do you see how much I'm trying to get off here? No fallout, because there's nothing on the brush. Well, I guess, I mean, I'm getting a little. I think it's just such a nude shade. Side by side, this is performing. The matte color in this is outperforming this by a mile. I'm sorry, It Cosmetics. This was a dud, I think. I got it on sale. Sephora was like $14. I don't know if that's half price or not, but it was a dud. Okay, back to e.l.f. We're just going to go with that one. Well, maybe we'll just maybe we'll just do this one over here and this one over here. When we're done, I'm just goofing around. All right. So anyway, my favorite on here is this darker one. I tried this one um, already, this shimmer, and it really just picks up my texture. It's just too light. So a little bit of a darker shimmer is kind of fun, and I can't believe I'm saying this. Um, and when I say a little, I mean a little. And I'm going in the center of my mobile lid. And yes, it doesn't take long of talking and stuff where my hood comes down and so those sparkles sort of get everywhere. So I just use a little and I just let, um, just let it go kind of on its own. This palette only has one shimmer, this It Naturally Pretty Essentials. So I guess in all fairness, I'll take this color here and use my pinky and put a dot. And then it has the one shimmer. I'm going to use my pinky again to duplicate. I just think that this feels drier, and I don't know. I just don't, it's just underwhelming, underwhelming me. So, okay, um, I definitely need to blend. This um, dark color, though, has a lot more punch on the It Cosmetics. And this one is, you know, you can just barely see it. I need, I need to go again. Or I need to go a little, <laughs> to make this match, I'm going to go in this darkest. Ah, this is so dark for me. I'm just making a, the smallest dot. And that's about as much as I can do without actually looking older. Because, um, I mean, when you start getting out here on me, up here and out here, I'm not, I'm never happy with it. I'm just not. It, it, it's okay, mate. It's okay on this video, but you step outside and you get in a truck and you catch right from the way your eye looks, my eye looks from the side. I currently am not doing that. The winter, I'm a little braver because I have on a little brighter color, darker colors, things like that. That might 
that might be a kind of a time to explore that. Okay, so now I have, I do actually have a trick to show you. Um, tight lining. I cannot do that underneath tight lining. I, I don't care how many times I try. Um, even if I'm able to do it, like I feel like I'm poking myself in the eye, it irritates my eyes. My eyes get red and itchy and stingy because whatever product I'm using, even though it's not supposed to go in your eyes, it's like right there on your waterline and it just doesn't, it gets in my eyes. So I go, I use the micro liners and um, I'm going to do a video about them because I'm still exploring. My favorite is Marc Jacobs and my favorite is Discontinued. Shisaito makes one. I'm going to order it. Um, this is a Maybelline. Let me make sure that's right. Maybelline Master Skinny. It's okay. It's not as creamy as the Marc Jacobs, but it's okay. I have to press a little harder, and um, it only comes in black and brown and gray. <laughs> um, we'll get the gray one. This is like a plum purple. The sh Shisaito's come in like Oh, a bunch of colors. So, I think I may splurge for those. Um, so anyway, this micro liner is so much easier. It's not a true tight line the way everybody says, where you go underneath and you almost can't see the line. You can kind of see the line above my lash line, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And then I have a trick after I do this one line. You know how I said I did that little sliver to raise my brow just a little? I do a little sliver, a little, like a little, the shape of your fingernail, a little, it's, you know, just a little, little curve on top in the center of my eyes on top of the eyeliner. So in the center of my eyes, the eyeliner is going to get a little thicker and just a little higher. And it makes my eye shape look a little bit bigger. You see my eyes? They're not that big compared to my face, compared to some people. And they're um, not that big. They're not that open. They're kind of, they've always been that way. Um, so. An eyeliner straight across is always like accentuate the color, but doesn't do anything to make them look bigger. And anyway, I've done this for years. And it's pretty subtle. Of course, I just messed that up since I'm filming. Another issue that I have is I don't see as well out of this eye. So when I'm trying to do this eye, I can't quite see what I'm doing. So I'm blurring it just a little. And I've kind of messed this up today. I can even see that I kind of messed up in the regular, not the magnifying. So I'm going to I'm gonna try again. I'm going to add some more. If in doubt, keep adding more makeup, right? <laughs> All right, let's see if I can blur this a little. I think what I might do is I'll get my fine liners. And then I'll get a... I still call it a coal, but I believe now the term is cajol. The word means the same. It's the um, name for a smudgeable eyeliner. It used to be, I mean, an actual ingredient in India and the Middle East, but you're not going it, to, it's like, it has lead, it's not good for you. But it, in Western makeup, um, in the United States for sure, cajol liner is not going to actually have cajole or coal in it or it may have charcoal like purified charcoal or something but it's they use that word to say more blendable 
Um, anyway, I want to get some of those in a matching, like a fine liner in navy and a cajole in navy. I don't know. I don't care about the brand. Um, but, well, I might care so the color matches, but, I mean, navy's navy, right? I don't know. Um, anyway, so that's what I do with my eyeliner. I don't know if you can tell on camera. It's really subtle, but I know when I look at my eyes, I feel like they stand out a little bit more. Uh, maybe I didn't do the perfect job over here today. I'm not perfect. So anyway, um, I'm going to put some mascara on. I'm going to put some blush and some lipstick on it. I'm going to be done. I know I've been yakking it up to right now. I'm using All May Mascara because it generally doesn't irritate my eyes. Generally, it's not the best at how your lashes look, but I have to make sacrifices. My lashes look great, but my eyes are bloodshot. <laughs> that is not going to work, is it? You remember when they used to say, let it dry before you add the second coat? It never worked for me. My eyes are already getting irritated just pulling my lashes. Whew. So I'm going to kind of go like this and let them, my eye make some more water, I guess. All right, on for the blush. I have a lot of pinks. I don't have a lot of like anything like this color. I'm going to use this Anastasia blush stick because it is like a classic cool pink tone. And I'm going to just put it on. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to pat it in because there's not much going on with my eyeshadow. I think I have room to be a little bold on something. This is an okay blush. I reviewed it in a video recently. It's okay. I paid, you know, it's a high end, higher end product. So I'm going to use it. I feel like that's a fairly decent color match for what I'm wearing. And then I only, I already know I only have like one purpley, one lip color that's got any purple tone, cool purples. I only have one, so. Pretty subtle. I guess I could tell you what it is. Do you want to know? <laughs> um, Ulta Beauty Shiny Sheer Lip Gloss. It's fine. It's not my favorite, not my worst. I'd say if it didn't taste, it has like a kind of a bleh, icky, unexciting bleh taste. If it tasted better, I'd like it better. Color and coverage and slick and slipperiness and all that jazz is fine. All right, so I'm going to make another video now that I have my half face, half sunscreen, half no sunscreen on. I'm going to check this. So it's moved again into these wrinkles here. I mean, it's a really hard sell to keep it out of these wrinkles. And then it has, um, hasn't really gotten back into my crow's feet when, since I wiped it off. I don't know if that's good enough for actual, to like actually buy the foundation and use it. I mean, this was a sample or something. I don't know. I do see that my mascara has made a mess under my eyes already. It's a little frustrating. And I'm going to be real professional. Okay, so I got the mascara off. And when I'm looking in that magnifying mirror, boy, cake city under my eyes with that foundation. I don't know. Such is life in the over 50 range. I want to say thanks for watching. I really appreciate it if you stuck with me all this time. I'm having a lot of fun making the videos. 
Um, and I'm getting better, and I do still ramble a lot, I know, but um, I've enjoyed it, and I'm really enjoying my quest for finding makeup that works for me, and maybe that will help help you in some way, I don't know, or give you some ideas of products you want to try to see if they work for you. Thanks again. Bye-bye.